Just one week into 2026, SpaceX stacked Booster 19 for Flight 12. This is version 3 hardware, the first generation built for orbital operations, not just test flights. But here's the interesting part. Weeks ago, Booster 18 collapsed during ground testing, and the entire vehicle was scrapped. So how did SpaceX recover so fast? Booster 19 carries 33 Raptor 3 engines, each pushing 20% more thrust than Raptor 2. That's millions of extra pounds of force at liftoff. And version 3 is just the beginning. What does this mean for Mars? Let's dive right in. Before we talk about what's next, we need to understand what went wrong with Booster 18. Late in December 2025, SpaceX was running a standard pressurization test, basically filling the tanks with propellant and simulating the forces the booster would face during an actual launch. This wasn't even a static fire. The engines weren't running. They were just checking if the structure could handle the internal pressure. It couldn't. The tanks buckled. The walls of either the methane or oxygen tank lost integrity under load, and the entire structure started to collapse. You could see the deformation from the outside. This wasn't an engine problem or a software glitch. This was a fundamental structural failure. And when a primary tank fails like that, there's no fixing it. You're looking at rebuilding almost the entire vehicle. So SpaceX made a call that would have been unthinkable just two years ago. They scrapped Booster 18 completely and moved on. Think about what that means. A few years back, losing a super heavy booster would have halted the entire Starship program for months, maybe longer. This time, it barely made a dent. Why? Because Booster 19 was already deep into production. SpaceX didn't pause to investigate for weeks. They didn't form committees or delay the timeline. They simply shifted focus, finished Booster 19, and had it stacked within weeks of the failure. That's not just fast iteration. That's a production line mentality. Now, Booster 19 isn't just a replacement. It's an upgrade. This booster represents the first full version 3 Super Heavy that's actually going to fly. And the biggest difference comes down to what's bolted to the bottom. 33 Raptor 3 engines. Let's be clear about what Raptor 3 brings to the table. A Raptor 2 engine produces around 230 tons of thrust at sea level. Raptor 3? We're looking at closer to 280 tons per engine. That's roughly a 20% jump in raw power. Scale that across 33 engines, and you're adding millions of pounds of extra thrust at liftoff. But it's not just about brute force. Raptor 3 is also fundamentally different in design. If you look at Raptor 2, you'll see exposed plumbing, pipes, and fuel lines running along the exterior of the engine. Those lines are vulnerable. Heat, vibration, debris during a 33-engine ignition, all of that puts stress on exposed components. Raptor 3 integrates much of that plumbing inside the engine structure itself. Fewer exposed parts means fewer potential failure points. And when you're lighting 33 engines simultaneously, every reliability improvement matters. Then there's chamber pressure. Raptor 2 already ran at around 300 bar, making it the highest chamber pressure rocket engine ever flown. Raptor 3 pushes even higher. Higher chamber pressure means more efficient combustion, which translates to better performance per kilogram of fuel burned. These aren't minor tweaks. These are the kinds of improvements that add up to significant mission capability. Sitting on top of Booster 19 will be Ship 39, the upper stage for Flight 12. And this is where the mission objectives start to shift. Earlier Starship ships were focused on proving they could survive re-entry, testing heat shield performance, and demonstrating basic control during descent. Ship 39 is different. This is orbital class hardware. By the time SpaceX stacked the booster, most of the major assembly work on Ship 39 was already done. The ship had gone through its initial structural checks. The heat tiles were installed. The flaps were mounted. This wasn't a rush job. It was a coordinated push. So what comes next? 
Booster 19 still needs to pass cryogenic proof testing. That means filling the tanks with supercooled liquid oxygen and liquid methane to simulate launch day conditions. If a vehicle can't pass cryo testing cleanly, it doesn't fly. Period. After cryo tests come the static fires. This is where things get intense. SpaceX will clamp the booster to the pad and ignite all, or most, of the 33 Raptor engines while the vehicle stays locked in place. You're talking about tens of millions of newtons of thrust being generated with the rocket going nowhere. It's one of the most difficult tests in the entire sequence. Typically, SpaceX schedules cryo-testing first, then static fires anywhere from a few days to a couple weeks later, depending on how the data looks. If everything goes smoothly, and that's a big if, we could be looking at a late January or February launch window. That's incredibly aggressive considering we're only in early January now. But this is SpaceX we're talking about. Aggressive timelines are kind of their thing. Here's where it gets even more interesting. While version 3 hasn't even flown a full mission yet, Elon Musk is already talking publicly about version 4. And the numbers he's throwing around aren't small upgrades, they're transformational. Right now, a fully stacked Starship version 3 stands just over 120 meters tall. Musk has said version 4 will be 10 to 20% longer, which would push the total height to around 140 meters. Most of that extra length won't go into the booster. It's going into the ship itself, the part that actually travels through space. Why does that matter? Because inside Starship, length equals tank volume, and tank volume equals fuel capacity. Version 3 can hold roughly 1,600 tons of liquid methane and oxygen in the ship. Version 4 is expected to push that closer to 2,300 tons. That's nearly a 50% increase in propellant. This isn't a minor improvement. This is a fundamental expansion of what Starship can do. The reason SpaceX cares so much about this comes down to one word, Mars. Getting to Mars isn't just about building a rocket that can leave Earth. It's about how much energy you can carry with you when you do. With version 3, Starship can reach Mars, but the trip would take somewhere between 6 and 8 months, depending on the launch window. That's a long time for humans to sit inside a spacecraft. You're exposed to cosmic radiation the entire way. You're relying on life support systems with no margin for error. You're burning through food, water, oxygen, and every other consumable you brought with you. With version 4, the extra fuel allows Starship to leave Earth orbit much faster. Higher departure velocity means a shorter cruise time. Instead of 6 to 8 months, the trip could drop to 3 to 5 months depending on orbital mechanics. Cutting even 2 or 3 months off that journey massively reduces radiation exposure and the amount of supplies needed. It also reduces the psychological strain on the crew. Shorter trips mean healthier arrivals. But more fuel means more mass. And more mass means you need more thrust to use it effectively. That's why version 4's ship is expected to carry 9 Raptor 3 engines instead of 6. 9 engines running at 280 tons of thrust each gives you enough power to perform strong burns in space without stretching engine run times too long. It also gives you redundancy. If one engine fails, you've still got eight others to complete the mission. Of course, adding fuel and engines to the ship increases liftoff mass. To compensate, SpaceX is also scaling up the Super Heavy booster for version 4. The booster is expected to carry around 4,500 tons of propellant, significantly more than version 3. With over 30 Raptor engines on the booster, total liftoff thrust could approach 10,000 tons. That would make Starship version 4 the most powerful rocket ever built by a massive margin. Not the most powerful rocket currently flying, the most powerful rocket ever built. Saturn V produced about 3,400 tons of thrust at liftoff. Version 4 would triple that. Here's the part that doesn't get talked about enough. SpaceX is doing all of this while flying missions. Version 3 is about to launch. 
Version 4 is already being designed and tested in parallel. This isn't a company that waits for one generation to prove itself before starting the next. They're building, testing, flying, and iterating simultaneously. It's a pace that no other space program, government or private, has ever sustained. <clears throat> so let's bring this all together. SpaceX stacked Booster 19 for Flight 12 just one week into 2026. This isn't just another test vehicle. It's the first version 3 Super Heavy actually built for orbital operations. After Booster 18 collapsed during ground testing just weeks ago, most people expected delays. Instead, SpaceX had Booster 19 ready to go and stacked within weeks. That's production line thinking, not prototype mentality. This booster carries 33 Raptor 3 engines, each pushing 20% more thrust than Raptor 2. That's millions of extra pounds of force at liftoff, with better reliability because the plumbing is now integrated inside the engine structure. Ship 39 sits on top, built for orbital class missions, not just survival flights. If cryo testing and static fires go smoothly, we could see a launch as early as late January or February. But version 3 is just the beginning. Version 4 is already in development, 10 to 20% taller, carrying 50% more fuel, with nine Raptor 3 engines on the ship instead of six. The super heavy booster will push nearly 10,000 tons of thrust at liftoff, making it the most powerful rocket ever built. And all of this is focused on one goal, cutting the Mars trip from six to eight months down to three to five months. Shorter trips mean less radiation exposure, fewer supplies needed, and healthier crews arriving on Mars. The pace SpaceX is maintaining is unprecedented. They're not waiting for one version to prove itself before building the next. They're designing, testing, and flying simultaneously. What we're watching isn't just rocket development, it's the infrastructure for interplanetary travel being built in real time. If you want to stay updated on every major Starship milestone as it happens, hit that subscribe button for Space Update 24 hours. Drop a comment below with your prediction. Will Flight 12 launch in January or February? And if this breakdown helped you understand what's really happening with Starship, smash that like button and share this with anyone who follows SpaceX. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Six months to Mars aboard Starship. That's 180 days of cosmic radiation and zero gravity destroying your body. NASA just unveiled a nuclear thermal rocket that could cut that time down to weeks, maybe even a single day. This engine extracts twice the energy from fuel compared to SpaceX.